In this video we're going to look at ways in which we can extend the behaviours of methods. In particular we're going to look at how to write code for alternative actions and that means introducing Java's if statement. So in regular programming the bodies of methods typically contain three types of action. There will be sequential actions, alternative actions that involve choices, and repetitive actions. And we'll look in detail at repetitive actions when we get on to chapter 4. Now so far in the course we've only seen sequential actions. What do I mean by sequential actions? Well here's an example taken from the print ticket method of the ticket machine where we have a sequence of println statements and each statement is executed in the order it's written from top to bottom. So the first thing that's done is that a line of hashes is printed. The second thing that's done is that the text the blue J line is printed and so on down through all five statements in the sequence. And as a result we get a sequence of printed lines appearing in the terminal and the order of those lines in the terminal exactly matches the order of the statements in the sequence of println statements. So Java implements this idea of sequential actions one statement after another. Now just to reinforce how important the order of the statements is on the outcome let's look at a simplified example. What we have here is a sequence of statements involving three integer variables x, y and z. And it's important in reading these statements to remember that that symbol is the assignment symbol and it does not mean equals as it might in school mathematics for instance. So these statements are executed in sequence from top to bottom which means that the first thing that happens is the value 3 is stored into the memory location represented by the variable x. The second statement involves storing the value 4 into the memory location known as variable y and so on. 5 is stored into z. The fourth statement then takes whatever the current value is in the memory location represented by variable y and copies that value into variable x. Then the value in z is copied into variable y and finally the value 0 is copied into z. So then the question is what would be printed by the final statement which is system.out.println y. And in order to answer that question we need to look back to the most recent assignment to the variable y and identify what value was stored into the variable in that most recently executed statement. So we have to work our way backwards from the final statement until we find an assignment to y and use what information is there to tell us what value is currently stored in y at the point where the print is made. So working our way back we can see that the most recent assignment to y involved taking the value in z and copying it into y. Well what value did z store? Well again we need to work back and find the most recent assignment to z from the point that we're currently looking so we work away back upwards and we can see that the value 5 was most recently stored in z. So that means that 5 is going to have been copied into the variable y and the result of printing out the value of y is the value 5. So just to reinforce the importance of the order of the statements let's do a little bit of reorganization. Suppose we move that assignment of z to y to be immediately after the assignment of 0 to z. Would that make a difference to what value is printed out by the println statement? And of course the answer is yes it will because now the value stored in z at the point where it's assigned to y will be different from the previous example because now there's an intervening assignment of the value 0 to z and therefore it's 0 now that will get assigned to y and so what will be output in this case is the value 0. So the order of those statements is important to the eventual outcome and we always have to read through a sequence from top to bottom 
in order to understand what the final result of that sequence is going to be. So now we want to think about alternative actions, Java's if statement, conditional decision making. So in order to do that, let's revisit the naive ticket machine and expose some of its flaws, some of its inadequacies, because we can then fix those inadequacies by making use of Java's if statement. So what I have here is the naive ticket machine project, and I've already created an instance of a ticket machine and the price of tickets is 1000 cents and we have 1000 cents in the balance. And so what we would anticipate is that I can print a ticket and the balance will then be reduced to zero because that's the price of the tickets. And indeed that's what happens. Here's my ticket printed. The balance is reduced to zero and the total has been increased to 1000. The total amount of money taken by the machine over the course of its life. Now let's illustrate one of the inadequacies of this particular naive implementation. Let's insert too much money into the machine. Let's insert 2000 cents, which is more than is needed to print a ticket. And now let's print a ticket. And what's happened is that the full amount of the balance has been transferred to the total, but we've only got one ticket printed whereas we'd put enough money into the machine to be able to print two tickets. 2,000 cents buys two 1,000 cent tickets. So there's clearly a problem in the implementation of the print ticket method in that it takes the full amount of the balance regardless of the price of the ticket. And that's clearly something we need to address and we need to fix. But there's a more serious problem, and that is with a balance of zero, I can print another ticket. So even though I haven't inserted any more money into the ticket machine, I now have three tickets printed out. And indeed I could go on and on and on, endlessly printing tickets. Let me clear the terminal window. And even though I'm not going to insert any more money, I can still go on printing tickets. And the total money taken by the machine is not increasing. So there's clearly a flaw here. I need to add some code to the ticket machine class that actually checks to see, first of all, whether enough money has been inserted into the machine to print a ticket. It's not enough simply to print a ticket simply because the print ticket method has been called. So I need some extra code in there that's going to test what the balance is and compare it against the price of the ticket to see whether it's OK to print the ticket. But there are some other inadequacies. So for instance, we would expect machines to reject things like counterfeit banknotes, foreign coins being inserted into the machine. And I can represent that sort of idea by inserting, let's say, a silly amount of money. So if I were to insert minus 500 cents, I wouldn't normally expect the machine to register that amount of money within its balance. But in fact, we can see over here that indeed it's registered my illegal amount of money, my minus 500 cents. And that's another failure of this ticket machine. So what I want to do is rewrite the insert money method of the ticket machine and have it check to see whether the amount of money being inserted is a sensible amount of money and only register that in the balance if it is a sensible amount of money. So we've seen a couple of examples in the naive ticket machine where it would be useful to be able to check whether it's appropriate to take a particular action, such as registering an illegal amount of money or printing a ticket if insufficient money has been inserted into the machine. So let's go back to the slides and let's see what Java provides us with in order to be able to make those kinds of decisions. Shall I do this? Shall I not do this? Shall I do this? Or should I do something else? So just to reiterate, the behavior of the naive ticket machine is inadequate in a number of ways. How can we do better? Well, we need the ability to choose between different courses of actions. And this is something that we do in everyday life. So for instance, we might decide, can I afford to go out for this evening? 
Do I have enough money left? If I do, then I'll go out for a meal. Otherwise, I'll just stay home and watch a movie instead. So there I'm making an everyday choice which involves either doing one thing or doing an alternative action. Or I might be going on a trip and I need first of all to check whether my car has enough fuel in it. So if my car needs refueling, then I'll go and refuel my car. Otherwise, I won't refuel my car. So that's a case where I'm either going to choose to do something or to not do it. And then whether I do it or not do it, the following action is going to be that I'm going to drive to wherever it is I was going to drive to. So two examples of everyday situations in which we have to make a choice based upon an evaluation of some circumstances. Or in programming terms, we'd say we want to evaluate a condition. And if the condition gives the value true, then we want to do one thing. If the condition evaluates to false, then we want to do something else or choose not to do the thing that we would do if the condition had evaluated to true. So Java provides us with an if statement in order to express these choices, these alternatives. So here's what we might call pseudocode for those two examples, where the elements in black are the normal Java syntax for writing if statements. So a Java if statement starts with the keyword if in lowercase. We then have a pair of parentheses and between those parentheses, we express the condition we wish to test that's either going to evaluate to true or false. So do I have enough money left? If I do, the condition is true and I will go out for a meal. But if I have enough money left evaluates to false, I don't have enough money left. Then the alternative is that I'm going to stay home and watch a movie. And that's expressed with Java syntax using the keyword else. So else I'm going to stay home and watch a movie. So those two possible actions, those two possible outcomes are strictly alternatives. I will only ever do one or the other. I will only ever go out for a meal or stay home and watch a movie. I won't do both on any one evaluation of that test. And then there's an example underneath where we either want to do something or do nothing. In this case, the test is, does my car need refueling? And if it does, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to refuel my car. In this case, there's no else part because there's not an alternative I need to substitute for refueling my car. I either refuel or don't. And then immediately afterwards, I drive to wherever I'm going. So let's go over that again and just illustrate the various components that we see present when we're writing an if statement in, in Java. So we have the keyword if, a pair of parentheses, and in between, we're going to perform some test. And then we do some statements if the test gave a true result. Or alternatively, we mark with an else keyword that we want to do a different set of statements if the test gave a false result. So just marking up those various elements. Here we have the if keyword and the else keyword. Here we have a Boolean condition that's to be tested that will give us either a true or a false result. And if it gives the result true, then there are some statements or some actions that we we'll want to do in that circumstance. But if it's false, then we can provide an alternative set of actions for that false result. Although, as remarked earlier, that else part is actually optional. We don't always have to do one thing or another. We could choose to do something or do nothing. OK, so how does that help us with improving the quality of the ticket machine? Well, we can use an if statement in a method like the insert money method to check whether the value stored in the parameter coming in is a sensible value. So clearly it makes no sense to add to the balance a negative value coming in. And it probably doesn't make sense to add a zero value either. So what we've done inside the insert money method now 
is to protect that assignment to the balance variable by wrapping it in an if statement. And only if the amount is greater than zero do we now carry out the action of updating the balance with the amount coming in. And in the circumstance where the amount value coming in is not a legal value, so it's less than or equal to zero, we go down to the else part instead, and this time we'll print out an error message of some sort, such as currency not recognized, or please insert a valid amount, something like that. So what we have here is the use of a conditional statement to avoid an inappropriate action, where the inappropriate action would be to add a negative or zero amount into the balance that would not be meaningful within the context of the ticket machine. Let's look at another example. Here's the print ticket method. Now what we saw is that the naive ticket machine allows us to print a ticket regardless of how much money there is in the balance. It doesn't compare the balance against the price to see whether there's enough money in the machine. And we want to correct that. So now we've written a condition which says only if the balance is greater than or equal to the price, so there's enough money being inserted by the customer, only in those circumstances should we print the ticket and then having printed the ticket we will only subtract the amount of the price from the balance and of course we know because the test guarantees this that the balance is greater than or equal to price and so when we subtract the price from the balance we know the balance will be now greater than or equal to zero it will be equal to zero if the balance exactly matched the price but it will be greater than zero if too much money for the price of the tickets was inserted into the machine. So now we're not consuming any extra money that the customer might have inserted. We're allowing that to remain in the balance so they can print another ticket or they might request a refund if we had that functionality within the ticket machine. But if that condition evaluates to false, in other words, if the balance is less than the price, then we want to print out an error message, such as, please insert this amount extra money before you try and print a ticket, that sort of thing. Now, just to reiterate, the else part is optional, as we saw with the refueling the car example. But here's a Java example where we are leaving out the else part. So suppose we have some code that's to do with controlling your home heating, and at some point, the system makes a test to see whether it's necessary to turn the heating on or not. It's probably going to compare the current temperature reading against the setting of the thermostat. And if the temperature is below the thermostat level, then it's going to turn the heating on. But if the temperature is not below the thermostat level, then nothing else needs to be done. Everything seems to be fine at the moment. So that's an example where we have no else part to the if statement. We either do something or we do nothing. One further example. It's not uncommon to not simply want to choose between two possible courses of action, but multiple courses of action, maybe three, four, five, very many. Now, in this case, what we often do is we write a series of if else if tests and it's quite common to lay out that sequence of tests in the way shown on the slide so here what we're seeking to do is to return a string from a method where the string says what classification of diploma or degree or award a student has received and there are various bands mark ranges that a mark has to fulfill in order to get either a distinction, a merit, a pass or a fail. So the first test says if the mark is a value that is greater than or equal to the level required for distinction, then we can return the distinction string. However, if it's less than distinction level, then there are a series of other tests we need to perform in order to work out what kind of grade this should receive. 
So the next test is to say, else if the mark level now is greater than or equal to the merit level, then we can return merit. But if it's still not high enough for the merit level, then we're going to check it against the pass level. So if the mark is greater than or equal to the pass level, then we're going to return pass. But if all of those three tests have returned a value false, so it's not distinction level, it's not merit level, it's not pass level, then we catch all of the other marks in the range below the pass level and we return the string fail to indicate that this mark is too low to receive one of the earlier gradings. And this style of, of repeated sequence of if tests with else alternatives is very common in, in programming situations. So to summarize, an if statement allows for alternative courses of action, and it's a very important feature of writing method codes. You will find that you write a lot of if statements over the remainder of this course. In an if statement, a Boolean condition is evaluated, and if the condition gives the value true, then the actions immediately following that test are, are executed, are carried out. However, if the condition evaluates to false, then the statements immediately after the condition are skipped over and we move down to the else part for an alternative set of actions. However, that else part is optional. So if there is no else part, then we simply do nothing in the case that the condition is false. So although we've looked at the code on the slides, it might be useful to look at it in the context of the source file. This now is the Better Ticket Machine project, and the Ticket Machine class here makes use of an if statement. So here now is our insert money method, where we're checking to see whether the amount is greater than zero, and only under those circumstances updating the balance. Otherwise, we're printing out an error message. And here's the print ticket method, where if the balance is greater than or equal to the price, we print the details of the ticket we update the daily total with only the amount of the price, and then we subtract from the balance again only the amount of the price. But if the balance is insufficient to print a ticket, then we come down to the else part and we print out an error message that clearly tells the customer how much more money they need to insert into the machine in order to print a ticket.